Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us study the human endocrine system. So what actually constitutes the human endocrine system? As I mentioned before also that the different endocrine glands together form the endocrine system. So now we will talk about the different endocrine glands which are present in the human body. So these are the different endocrine glands. Hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal, islet of Langerhans of pancreas, ovaries and testis. So these are the different endocrine glands which together form the endocrine system in human beings. Now in biology, these terms are always a pain. People always say that why do they have such difficult names in bio? But that is how it is because the names can't be changed. So once you start understanding things, I think it doesn't become much difficult to remember the names, right? Okay, so these are the endocrine glands which we will talk about now in the next few slides and we will also talk about the hormones which are secreted by these endocrine glands because we will know their purpose only when we know what purpose these hormones actually serve. So we will start with the hypothalamus. Let us now talk about the first endocrine gland that is the hypothalamus. So we will talk about three things about each endocrine gland. Where is it located in our body? Which is the hormone that it secretes? Because that is the most important part as far as an endocrine gland is concerned. And what is the function that uh, that particular hormone performs, right? So here for hypothalamus, I had shown you in a previous picture, right? It is located in the brain. So it is present in brain. So here you can see in this picture, the location of hypothalamus. This red thing which you see here, that is the hypothalamus. So since it is present in the brain, therefore it acts as a link between the endocrine system and the nervous system. How? Because since it, it itself is an endocrine gland, so it is a part of endocrine system. Now since it is located in the brain, which is uh, an, a very important part or a cardinal part of the nervous system, therefore this hypothalamus actually acts as a link between the endocrine and the nervous system. So it controls the secretion from glands, so it is endocrine and it also controls the functions of the nerves which connect brain and spinal cord to different parts of the body. So that is how it performs both the functions. It helps in the endocrine system, it also helps in the nervous system. So it acts as a link between the two. Uh, this hypothalamus which you can see in this picture is generally in, in real time it is approximately of the size of a pearl. So it's a link between nervous and endocrine system. So what are the hormones which it secretes? It secretes releasing hormones. The hormones secreted by hypothalamus are called releasing hormones. Now what do these hormones do? They control hormone secretion from pituitary glands. So what are pituitary glands? So this is the gland which we will talk about the next. So pituitary gland is a very important gland. So you will know that in the next slide. Now the purpose of the only function of this hypothalamus is to control the hormone secretion from pituitary glands because pituitary gland is called as the master gland. So the secretion of from the pituitary gland controls a lot of things inside our body. So it is very very important that the hormone which gets secreted from the pituitary glands gets secreted in the right amount. So in order to control the secretion from pituitary gland we need another hormone. So that hormone is hypothalamus. So function of hypothalamus is to control the hormone secretion from the pituitary glands. Now if you see in this picture hypothalamus and pituitary are located very close by. The red one is hypothalamus and the green one which is located just below the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland. So that was all about hypothalamus. Let us now talk about the next gland that is pituitary. Location 
obviously it is located in the brain attached beneath hypothalamus it is called as the master gland just now i was telling right it is known as the master gland because it has got lot of capabilities because it secretes hormones that control many other endocrine glands in the body so the hormone which is secreted by pituitary gland that hormone will control many other endocrine glands so that means it is the master because it is controlling so many other glands right so that is why it is known as master glands now this pituitary gland is divided into two lobes so now as far as the structure of a pituitary gland is concerned so here if you see this is the pituitary gland so the pituitary gland is connected to the hypothalamus by i mean it is located below the hypothalamus but it is attached to the hypothalamus by a stalk like structure now if you look at the structure of pituitary gland i mean at a closer look so it will be like this so we will see that it is divided into two lobes it is divided into two half so this half so this half is the posterior lobe and this lobe is known as the anterior lobe so that is how the this pituitary gland actually looks like so it is divided into two lobes and these two lobes of pituitary glands secrete separate hormones so when you look at the list of the hormones you can see that there are so many different hormones which are secreted by this pituitary gland and out it that is why it is a master gland right so the first three hormones that is the growth hormone <clears throat> trophic hormone and the prolactin hormone these are the three hormones which are secreted by the anterior lobe of pituitary gland whereas the last two hormones that is the antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin these two hormones are secreted by the posterior lobe correct now let us look at the functions which which these hormones perform so let us see what are these special functions which these hormones perform because of which pituitary gland has been termed as the master gland so growth hormone the name itself explains it all it controls the overall growth of the body so when i talk about growth growth involves development of bones development of muscles so all those things happen because of growth hormone so now you can imagine if there is no growth hormone what will happen people human beings will not grow animals will not grow right so a very important hormone that is growth hormone next is trophic hormone now what are the trophic hormones in trophic hormones there are many different types of hormones which are actually secreted they are thyrotrophin corticotrophin and endorphins they are together known as trophic hormones they are all trophic hormones now what does thyrotrophin do these trophic hormones they basically controls some secretion from some other endocrine glands and because of these trophic hormones which are secreted by pituitary gland they are known as the master glands because with the help of these trophic hormones it actually controls the other endocrine glands of the body so what does thyrotrophin does it regulates the hormone secretion from thyroid gland so the name matches right thyroid so thyrotrophin so thyroid is another endocrine gland similarly corticotrophin it regulates the hormone secretion from adrenal glands it is again another endocrine gland endorphins it regulates reproductive organs that is testes and ovaries to make the sex hormones so now you see this pituitary hormone has control over the thyroid i mean the pituitary gland has control over the thyroid gland the adrenal gland the testes and the ovaries so so many different glands are controlled by the pituitary gland and that is why pituitary gland is known as the master gland right okay this endorphins also acts on the nervous system it reduces the feeling of pain like when you the feeling of pain when, when we get hurt so we feel a lot of pain right so that feeling is controlled by this endorphin because anything which happens in 
excessive amount can harm our body. So even those kind of feelings, feelings of stress, depression, they can also cause a lot of harm to our body. So these feelings of pain are also controlled by the endorphins. Right? Okay. So this was the, these are the two categories of hormones, growth hormone and trophic hormone. Next is the prolactin hormone. What is prolactin? This hormone helps in growth and development of mammary glands. The word lactin, what does this word lactin mean? You would have heard this word related to feeding, like lactation period, right? That means when the period when a female gives birth to her child and she's feeding her child, right? So that, that from there the word lactation comes. So lactation is something related to milk. Lactose, what is lactose? It is the sugar which is present in milk okay so prolactin is growth and development of mammary glands this is the hormone which is responsible for milk production in females then we have the antidiuretic hormone this hormone regulates the water balance in the body so while we were talking about the life processes in the previous lesson, I told you that it is very, very important to maintain the correct water balance in the body. If there is too much of water in the body, that will cause a problem. If there is scarcity of water, even that can cause a problem. So while we were talking about the excretory system, you remember, we talked about the kidney tubules. So during urine formation, what happened? Whatever amount of substances came in those kidney tubules, water was reabsorbed from there. So reabsorption of water happened and that finally resulted in the, the remaining balance finally re resulted in the formation of urine. So this antidiuretic hormone actually helps in controlling the reabsorption of water. That means it may, tries to maintain the correct water balance in the body which is again very very important. And the last hormone that is oxytocin. It is often known as the birth hormone. Why? Because it regulates the contraction and relaxation of uterus muscles during childbirth. Now what happens? Inside a pregnant woman, the child is present inside the uterus. Now during childbirth, what happens? The uterus muscles actually move. That means they contract and relax because of which the baby slips out and comes out of it. So this contraction and relaxation of the uterus muscles is controlled by this hormone oxytocin. It is also known as the milk ejecting hormone. Why? Because it regulates the mix, milk expulsion during lactation. So now many people get confused that prolactin is a hormone which controls the milk production in females. Now oxytocin is another hormone which controls the milk expulsion during lactation. So are they the same? Are they doing the same job? No, they are doing two different jobs. When I talk of prolactin, it actually is controlling the production of milk which is present in the mammary glands. So it is actually helping in the production of milk. But when we are talking about oxytocin, it helps in the expulsion of milk. I mean, when a baby is being breastfed, when a baby is being breastfed, the milk actually comes out of the mammary glands. So that expulsion of milk or that coming out of milk, that is controlled by the, ox the hormone oxytocin. That is why it is called milk ejecting hormone, whereas prolactin is the milk producing hormone. Right? So these are the five important hormones which are secreted by the pituitary gland and we saw how important they are. We need all of them, I mean, so very much. If any of them is not there, it is going to cause a lot of trouble to the body. So now that we have spoken about two glands, that is hypothalamus and pituitary gland. So now are you getting an idea that how hormones actually help in maintaining the control and coordination of the body? So now you see, here you have a hormone which actually, so when that hormone is secreted, for example, if I talk about the growth hormone. Now when the pituitary gland secretes the growth hormone into the blood, what happens? That hormone will diffuse around the gland and then it will be carried by the blood and then it will reach other cells of the body. Now it will go to specific cells where growth is needed. 
and then growth will happen in all those places. So now you understand how information is being carried by the hormones. Similarly, when I talk about the antidiuretic hormone, it is again released into the blood. It reaches to the required areas. Maybe it reaches to the kidney tubules and it controls the reabsorption of water. Thus, it maintains a correct water balance. So, you are able to understand, right, that how hormones are able to carry information in themselves and thus able to ma maintain the synchronization between various organs in the body. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.